Lena grew up in a strict Muslim home in northern Nigeria. But that didn't stop the then 13-year-old from wanting to find out more about Christianity. She was very curious about Jesus. The life of the Christians around me influenced me and I saw that their lives were good. They were also talking about Jesus being the savior of the world. From that time, I wanted to know Jesus. But there was a problem. Lena's father was an imam, a teacher of Islam in the mosque. He was known in the community as very intimidating and in being extremely firm when it came to matters of the Islamic religion. People were afraid of him, including Lena. But she was determined to learn more about Jesus, even though she had been taught by her father to hate Christians. My uncle was a Christian and I told him I wanted to go to church, but he said no because he was afraid of my father. So Lena decided to go to church on her own. But when her father found out, he confronted his teenage daughter. He was very angry after he found out I went to the church and he beat me severely, to the point that my body was in pain and swollen because of the beating that I got from my dad. Your father, he said he loved you, but he beat you up and he threatened to kill you with a sword. How did you feel? I was very upset and surprised by my father's attitude because I knew he loved me. But he changed and now he wanted to kill me. I was angry and discouraged. I wanted to become a Christian, but I wasn't sure because it might cost me my life. In spite of the risks, Lena was determined to learn more about Jesus. At that point, her father considered moving his family, including Lena, to another village because of the disgrace his daughter had brought to him. But then he came up with another plan. Without my knowledge, my father and other family members organized a marriage for me with a husband I didn't even know. They didn't tell me about the marriage they were planning and that it was for me. So what were you thinking when you found out you are going to be married? You were just 13 years old. When I found out about that, I was very upset emotionally. I decided to run away. I went to the home of one of my aunts, but she wouldn't let me stay with her because she was afraid of my father, so I had to go back home. Lena would be forced to marry a man who already had a wife, but she would wait for an opportunity to run away again. A year later, an opportunity came and she left for good. And it was in 2016, Lena made a decision to follow Jesus. My mom's aunt connected me to a pastor. He asked me why I wanted to become a Christian and if I knew the danger and what I was about to enter. I told him that no matter how much it will cost me, I won't go back. So he prayed with me and encouraged me. The pastor moved Lena from house to house to keep her safe. She would eventually be moved out of the area, and after a year in an orphanage, she was brought to the safe house in Nigeria's Middle Belt, which is supported by the Voice of the Martyrs Canada. Before I came here, I could not read or write in Hausa, but now I can. I'm also learning English. But what really excites me is that I'm learning patience with others and about love. So many things about obeying God and how to hear God. I'm being built up in my faith. Lena's passion is to become a pastor, go back to her village someday and preach the message of God's love through his son Jesus to those who don't know him. While she hopes that when she returns she will be received because of the way her life has been transformed, if not... The Bible teaches that whoever wants to follow Jesus must be ready to be persecuted, to be ready to be hated by so many people. The Bible encourages us to stand firm up to the end of our lives here on earth. Ibrahim, now in his early 20s, grew up in a large Fulani Muslim home in northern Nigeria. He had seven siblings. His interest in Christianity came when he was a teenager through a friend who was a secret believer in Jesus. I was staying with him, and any time I was there or he visited me, he would wake up in the night and read his Bible and pray. He did that every time. Ibrahim was impressed with his young friend's dedication to his faith. I told him I too wanted to become a Christian, but he was afraid because he thought I was a spy. But I told him, no, I want to become a Christian. So he took me to church, and the pastor led me to Christ. 
Soon after coming to Christ, the church Abraham attended publicly announced that he'd become a Christian. The news traveled to his father, who was angry with his son's decision and threatened his life. So the pastor that brought you to Christ gets you to a safe place. Your father and your brothers find out that he is the one that is taking you to this safe place. They come to his home. They threaten to kill him, burn his house down, unless he takes them to you. Tell me what happened. The pastor took my two elder brothers to where I was and brought me back home and they tied me up for three days and didn't give me anything to eat. Abraham was able to escape again, but it was short-lived. His brothers found him and this time they chained him up for three weeks. They also took me to so many places, including seeing an imam who did an incantation on me. They also brought me to a lady witch doctor, but they said to my brothers they couldn't help in that matter. But the sufferings didn't stop. Uh, another time, your father and your brothers, they caught you, they beat you up very badly, they broke your ribs. Tell me what happened. While they were beating me, there was a woman who came to my rescue by falling on me, so they stopped beating me. I was taken to the hospital. His family tried to force him into a marriage, and each time the girls refused because he told them he was a Christian. When his father knew there was no changing Abraham's mind, he told his son he disowned him. His mother even told militants to kill him if they saw him. But Abraham was still not able to get away from his parents, and was even forced to travel with them to work in another part of the country. While there, he met a pastor from his tribe. I told him everything that had happened to me. He wanted to help me and connected me to another pastor who brought me here to be discipled. So you've come here to this discipleship school, safe house. What have you been learning? I'm learning to be hospitable to people. I'm also learning to go outside and preach the gospel to those who don't know him. Also, my character is being molded in so many ways. You've suffered much since becoming a follower of Jesus, the beatings, you've been chained, you've been on the run, but your faith has gotten stronger, you become bolder. What's happened? Why is that happening? The reason I was bold is that my friend once told me that I shouldn't be afraid of the person who can kill my body, but the one who can kill both the body and soul. When I was going through these things, these words kept coming to me. So I decided to fear God who can save my soul at the end of time. Abraham is also in the VOM Canada sponsored discipleship school with the desire to be an evangelist so he can share the gospel to his Fulani people. He is also receiving vocational training so he can be self-supporting in his ministry. The reason I want to be an evangelist is because my heart goes back to my parents. And I pray that God will give them long life so that when I'm trained and filled with the Holy Spirit, I want to go back so they can know the light of the gospel. For more information on how you can help persecuted Christians in Nigeria and around the world, visit our website at vomcanada.com or call 905 670 9721.